I am Monica Arora, Director of Health Promotion Division at Public Health Foundation of India. In this chapter, we will address the topic of sexual and reproductive health. So let's trace the history of sexual and reproductive health. Sexual and reproductive health first found its voice in the Alma Atta Declaration of 1978, which spoke of the importance of primary health care. This included maternal and child health and family planning. It laid out a continuum of care for women and children rather than just address it within the confines of childbirth. In 1994, the International Conference on Population and Development at Cairo recognized that sexual and reproductive health was a fundamental human right and that empowering women and girls was critical to ensuring well-being of individuals, families and nations. This was the first time that sexual and reproductive health was framed in the language of rights and empowerment. It also crucially spoke of the need for male involvement, recognizing that men are primary decision makers on political, social, economic, and domestic fronts. In 2000, the Millennium Development Goals recognized as an explicit target the need for universal access to reproductive health. At the Beijing World Conference on Women in 2005, women's rights across economic, social, and political spheres were recognized as fundamental human rights, including control over all aspects of their health, including their own fertility. The Sustainable Development Goal 3 on health and well-being recognizes the need to ensure universal access to sexual and reproductive healthcare services while Sustainable Development Goal 5 calls for universal access to sexual and reproductive health and reproductive rights in line with the Cairo and Beijing declarations. As we can see, following the Millennium Development Goals, sexual and reproductive health and rights issues are recognized from the outset in the Sustainable Development Goals. This is an important milestone a recognition that women's access to quality sexual and reproductive health care and information and their ability to decide whether and when to have children are central to their own health and well-being as well as for the social and economic well-being of their children, families, community and nation. It is also important to remember that sexual and reproductive health and rights are cross-cutting by nature and are important for several other sustainable development goals. What exactly do we mean by sexual and reproductive health rights? So let's look at the definition. Sexual and reproductive health rights include access to sexual and reproductive health care and information, as well as autonomy in sexual and reproductive decision making. But there are barriers to achieving these sexual and reproductive health rights. What are those? Let's talk about gender inequality. It is a fundamental barrier and research has clearly found association between beliefs in inequitable gender norms and the rates of HIV, STI transmission, contraceptive use, physical violence against women and between men as well, domestic chores, parenting and men's health seeking behaviors. Continuing to talk about some other barriers, women and girls face obstacles to accessing education and awareness about sexual and reproductive health rights in schools, communities, and within the health system. They also lack financial independence and there is difficulty in mobility, which restricts women's ability to make decisions about their own reproductive needs. More broadly, in most parts of the world, women lack the ability to make basic decisions about their families, their education, and their health outcomes. In many low and middle income countries, access to healthcare services is uneven and very often unaffordable. In such cases, women's health needs are often ignored. At the national level, Political will is a very important determinant. It decides the changes to the legal and regulatory structures that govern rights issues. 
particularly reproductive rights issues. When political will is lacking, change is slow to come about. Finally, no health system can ignore the religious, cultural, and community norms which govern the social behavior. In many countries, these norms perpetuate existing biases against women and girls. So let's turn to where we stand with respect to sexual and reproductive health. Let's start with adolescence. Adolescent sexual health is a major concern. With globally, nearly 1 million girls under the age of 15 give birth every year. And 3 million girls between the age group of 15 to 19 years undergo unsafe abortions. Continuing to talk about unsafe abortion, it is a concern for women in general. Approximately today, 25% of world's population lives in countries with highly restrictive abortion laws, mostly in Latin America, Africa, and Asia. Three quarters of all abortions in Latin America are unsafe. Nearly half of all abortions happen in the least safe circumstances in Africa, where women face the highest risk of death. In absolute numbers, the largest number of unsafe abortions occur in Asia. So let's talk about lack of access and availability of contraception as a barrier. There is not only lack of access and availability, but also there is lack of access and availability in counseling for contraception. And this is a global challenge again. Only 54% women had access in 1990. This has increased to 63% by 2010, but still leaving nearly 40% women without assured access. Also, access to quality maternal care is another ongoing challenge. And this is particularly for low and middle income countries. Only three in five women receive at least four antenatal visits globally, exposing them to the risk of unsafe pregnancies. Sexually transmitted infections are the second most common cause of healthy lives lost in women after pregnancy-related causes. What are the various kinds of STIs or sexually transmitted infections? These include gonorrhea, chlamydia, syphilis, trichomonas, and human papilloma virus, including some that can be precursors to cancers. Women account for more than half the number of people living with HIV worldwide. Young women, 10 to 24 years old, are twice as likely to acquire HIV as young men of the same age. We also know that violence against women is a global epidemic. It is estimated that one in three women will experience physical or sexual violence in their lifetimes. Traditional practices like female genital mutilation are widely prevalent. More than 200 million women and girls alive today have undergone female genital mutilation in the countries where the practice is concentrated. Let's turn now to thinking about solutions. What can we do to achieve the sexual and reproductive health and rights goals? Definitely, there is need to have interventions across the age spectrum and also across gender. So comprehensive sexuality education needs to be integrated into the overall health promotion framework. It has to start in schools, it has to start in communities and even in the health system to be able to comprehensively cover adolescents and adults. Less restrictive abortion laws are essential, but not enough. Additionally, community norms and infrastructure needs to support access to safe abortion care. The case in point being uh, Ireland, which illustrates how the country has moved over a span of 25 years from restrictive laws to a legal framework which was more accommodating of safe abortions based on changing public opinion. In similar vein, September 28 is recognized as International Safe Abortion Day, 
which is part of a global campaign to repeal laws that deny women the right to reproductive health care. Talking about universal access, there is need to provide universal access to different modes of contraception together with counseling and provision through the health system. But particularly within the primary care is the most important need. We know from global best practices that quality access to antenatal, intrapartum and postnatal care at primary and secondary level is essential to improve maternal health. Preventing and treating sexually transmitted infection in women is critical. For this, an important component of prevention is condom use, which in turn is hard for women due to restricted access. HIV prevention and care is also critical and similar to the case of sexually transmitted infections requires that women have access to condoms and the agency to access care. Violence against women and girls requires a multi-pronged approach that combines awareness for prevention as well as support and care to the victims. How do we deal with traditional practices like female genital mutilation? That also requires a combination of legal and policy change, awareness and community outreach. Several countries have banned the practice, which is a good first step, but not enough. Finally, promotion of sexual and reproductive health and rights requires at its core a public health system that takes care of multifaceted view focused on well-being of women and girls in all dimensions. To conclude, it is important to remember that sexual and reproductive health needs greater attention in the overall development agenda with a focus on achieving gender equity. What all need to be addressed? Talking of health system, it needs to be designed keeping women's sexual and reproductive health and rights in mind, but they cannot do it alone. We need to address social determinants such as women's empowerment, universal primary schooling, long-term environmental sustainability, they hold the key to addressing these determinants. Respecting the autonomy of choice and enabling supportive services in promoting family planning is critical. We need to start early. We need to have comprehensive sex education in schools, but not to put it as only sex education. It needs to be embedded into the broader framework of health education, health promotion, health literacy. And we also need to importantly talk about healthy gender relations to be able to respect all genders. At the end, we need to note that sexual and reproductive health is not only about women and girls boys and men need to be part of the solution.